Hi guys, this is tabernews.com and I'm here with a device called the AllView X1 Extreme. It debuted in February and it's a flagship from the Romanian company AllView. It's basically a rebranded Johnny eLife E7 from China and the price tag is $620. The design is very interesting as you can see. This one is a 5.5 inch phablet and it's a high spec Romanian brand phone that's made in China by the famous brand Johnny. Okay, so we're going to talk about the design. First of all, the handset is rather bulky. It measures 9.7 millimeters in thickness and it weighs 150.5 grams. It's not very heavy considering its size, so at least that's a plus. The body is rectangular, as you can see. We got straight edges all the way. They're pretty uncomfortable if you hold the phone for a lot of time while making phone calls. And uh, also, you'll see that at the top and at the bottom is slightly curved. There's this curve right here and this one here. So top and bottom are pretty curved. The camera is very much out of the case. So it's pretty protruding outside the case. The edges of the screen are pretty slim, actually very slim, as you can see. It's not an edge to edge display, but pretty close to that. And the buttons on the side, the physical buttons have pretty good feedback. These volume buttons and the on off button at the top as I said, good feedback. This is a very glossy and slippery phone, you can see it glittering here, so glossy and slippery, just like let's say the Galaxy S4 and S3 and now let's check out the surrounding area. So we got the display up front, obviously, a pretty powerful front camera here, then comes the earpiece, then the notification LED and here we got the three capacitive buttons at the bottom, we got the home button here and we have the back button here and the menu button here I know you cannot see them so let's try to fix that okay wireless display close light button nope so here they are as I said home button menu button and back button capacitive buttons below the display now at the top we got the audio jack right here, the on off button right here while on the left side there is the micro sim card slot that can be removed with a metal key bundle in the box on the right side volume buttons at the bottom we got the micro USB port, a microphone near it and two speakers here very discreetly integrated a small orifices at the back we got a huge camera area below it there is the LED flash, another microphone above the camera and uh, that's pretty much it. Logos here, even the DTS sound logo that promises good quality. Overall, if we get past the edges, these curved edges here, and also the gloss, this is basically a bigger Xperia, if you were to ignore the glossiness. It depends on your preferences, I don't like it, frankly speaking. It's a unibody design, it's very glossy and slippery, but some people may prefer it just for the sake of the big screen. Once again, unibody case, and internal magnesium chassis that gives it more strength. Um, the screen, as I said, is almost edge to edge. The bezel measures 2.4 millimeters, and uh, the facade is 77.5% display. So, if you like a big display and a reasonably uh, heavy body, this is it for you. If you don't like gloss and slippery devices, this is not for you. Now, moving further to the hardware side of things, we got a display here, an IPS LCD with uh, Japan Display uh, Ink technology, one glass solution, the diagonal is 5.5 inches, this one is a full HD screen, low temperature polysilicon is also used, and Gorilla Glass 3 protection. Inside you can find a quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor, clocked at 2.15 GHz, and with Krite 400 cores. The GPU is the Adreno 330, clocked at 450 Megahertz. We also have 3 gigabytes of LPDDR3 storage, which is very impressive. Up until now, the only 3 gigabyte phone I've tested was the Galaxy Note 3. So here's yet another model with 3 gigabytes of RAM. The storage is 32 gigabytes, and there is no micro SD card slot here. Keep that in mind. We got a 16 megapixel back camera with LED flash at the back. And a truly impressive aspect, at the front we got an 8 megapixel camera that's very good. On the connectivity side we got Wi-Fi, we got Bluetooth 4.0, LTE, NFC, HSDPA, micro USB 2.0 and GPS.
In the section and others, well, we've got DTS audio technology, Yamaha amplifier, noise cancelling technology, accelerometer, gyroscope, compass and FM radio. The battery is a lithium polymer unit with a capacity of 2500 mAh. On paper, it should provide us with 250 hours of standby or 500 minutes of talk time. In our test that involved the Wi-Fi on, brightness at 50% and the continuous HD playback, well, we achieved 8 hours and 21 minutes during HD playback. I would say it's pretty reasonable, but if you compare this to other new models, like for example the Galaxy S5 that achieves 11 hours, it pales in comparison. The LG G2 for example gets 9 hours, so we're not very far from that. The charging time is 2 hours and 46 minutes. Frankly, I was expecting better than a capacity of 2500 mAh for such a big device. And um, I did get about one day and a half of moderate usage, so that's reasonable. But frankly speaking, it's below the performance of the Galaxy Note 2, for example. And I was expecting more in 2014. We also have a power manager app here. That I'm going to look for. Here's the power management app. So you can do a bunch of power saving, we have a nifty estimate here and when you're uh, making it charge by connecting it to a charger, you'll see the estimated time for the charging. So the power saving involves the following. You can enable the condition immediately or at a certain level. Some of the settings involve turning off the connectivity option, GPS, decreasing the brightness or the screen timeout. What happens when the screen is off? We got a special night power saving mode. And we have the auto clean for the background processes and some tips for your optimal functioning of the battery. So a very nice power manager feature. We also have the power consumption here to see what kind of software and what kind of hardware used up the most energy recently. Also you can enter the power saving mode right now if you want and this will limit your CPU performance. We got intelligent lightning, night power saving and that nifty, nifty estimation. There's also a cute widget that I like to use, this one. It offers you quick access to power saving features, nice estimation and nice access to connectivity areas, GPS, timeout, everything to customize and limit the usage. By the way, the battery has SDI technology, which theoretically means it has a capacity with uh, almost 30% bigger compared to usual batteries. I would say that 8 hours of uh, continuous HD playback is not what I expected, so I was expecting just a bit more since it's a tablet after all. Now on the audio side we have Yamaha amplifier on this device and as you can see we got DTS sound. DTS technology usually handles better quality and better surround. Let's check out the music player. It has a very inconspicuous icon. Here it is, the music player, a very simple UI. And now let's listen to some tunes. Okay, let's try this one. Let's go to the maximum volume. Speakers are right here. And now some conclusions. The speakers are pretty loud. They're about the level of a flagship, a modern flagship, which is good. We have good bass, good clarity. Also, this DTS area with special effects. We got a special option for focus, bass boost, 3D effects, space reverberation, clarity, strengthening of the volume, and some presets like standard, nature, surround, voice, and default. So these are the DTS options that you get on this device. And uh, there are also some presets, as you saw. Next up, we can enter the settings area. There's a shake feature. You can shake the mobile in order to change the song. Uh, you can keep the screen on at any time. And you can access DTS. And something called the auto filter that I frankly am not good at. So probably related to music, bitrate or something like that. Okay, now as far as the headphones are concerned, this is it. This is the pair of headphones that you can bundle with this device. Kind of reminds me of the headphones that HTC had when they were working with Beats. Very comfy in the ear and uh, very good volume. They're loud, but not exaggeratedly comfy. Very good bass, very warm voice. And we even have a small remote control here. 
it only has an on off button play pause button i don't see any volume buttons here as i said pretty comfy and we can also use them as an antenna for your fm radio so here we go searching for that fm radio app this is it it actually looks very nice this application it also has a recording feature so if you can find a nice tune you can record it by pressing this little red button we got options for mono playback or stereo playback this is how you look up your frequency and we got the option to start recording, stop recording, sleep mode, channels, settings like audio output, record duration and regional bands. So we're pretty much covered in the audio department with very good audio experience. I would say it's about the same level as a modern flagship, the same level as let's say a Galaxy S5 but not exactly there since that's a bit better but only a bit. Now, as far as the video is concerned, what we got here is a JDI screen, it means Japan Display Ink. That one is a conglomerate made by Sony, Hitachi and Toshiba. The screen uses full lamination technology. Uh, we also get reduced consumption, better clarity and a feature called low temperature polysilicon, which means a faster response time and lower consumption. There's also a technology called CABC, Content Adaptive Brightness. And um, this one makes the backlight more reduced depending on the image that's shown on the screen. This one is a 5.5 inch IPS LCD Full HD screen. It's pretty much edge to edge. It has a small bezel, 2.4 millimeters. And now let's play a video. This is the video app. And this is the test video. Here we go. We got good brightness, we got wide viewing angles, it's an IPS after all. And let's see what else. The colors are a bit oversaturated. I have to say that this screen is bad in sunlight. I can say that because I've taken pictures on a very sunny day and I almost couldn't see the photo options because of the screen's problem in the sunlight. The video player also includes a feature like pop-up play from Samsung with a bit of lag. You can move around your play window like this. You can go back to full screen mode. You can also lock the screen to play the video. You can also take a screenshot. And that's pretty much it as far as the video playback is concerned. Now, as far as the lux level goes, let's see what we got here. We measure the lux level using a lux meter and this is what ours has shown. 337 lux units it's reasonable but during day-to-day -day use you'll notice that it's a pretty bright screen and the pixels are of the rgb stripe kind this is what the pixel look like on our microscope i have to mention that this screen is also slightly whitish at maximum brightness so if you turn the brightness all the way up just like it is right now you'll notice that it tries to compensate for the lack of lux units by adding extra white which makes it look whitish when compared to a really bright screen like the one of the Galaxy S5. It can hurt your eyes if you're watching many movies on it so that's not cool trying to compensate for the lack of brightness with the whitish hue. The black is reasonably deep. Overall it's a good display not an excellent one only good. It fits the profile of a phone that's not very expensive and still wants to be a flagship. Now as far as the camera goes 16 megapixel the sensor is an Omnivision OV 16825 the sensor measures 1.21 centimeters and um, we have eight lenses here with a UV filter and anti-reflection and um, we also have a special frontal lens made of sapphire for the sake of protection. The pixels of this camera measure 1.34 microns. By the way, the Galaxy S5 has pixels that measures 1.12 microns, so we're beating it in this chapter. The LED at the back is supposed to offer 60% much more brightness than the usual LEDs, which I don't find to be true after some careful testing. And now as far as the camera UI is concerned, let's check it out like this. We got this little castle right here. And this is the camera UI, nothing fancy, pretty much what you've been expecting. On the left side, we got a shortcut to the settings, we got the front camera option and the flash option, while on the right side, we got the video capture option, photo capture and gallery. Okay, and now we proceed to the actual settings. So we got two modes here that we can use. This is the normal mode. This one features the options like HDR, auto scene, sound 
uh, geotagging, capture mode that includes smile shot, so it takes a picture if you smile, normal capture, V sign shot, make the V sign for take, to, take, to take a picture, touch shot, touch the screen to take a picture, and self timer that can be set to 10 seconds, 2 seconds, or 5 seconds. There's also picture size, 60 megapixel, 30 megapixels, which should be in 4 to 3, or you can go to 12 megapixels to create a full screenshot. As I said, this is the normal display of options, and this one is the professional mode. This one also includes geotagging, sound, face detection, and a level meter. This is what it does. It helps you level the picture, so it's totally straight and leveled up. Back to the options, we also have auto scene and ISO level going up to 1600, exposure, white balance with a few options as well, and the size of the photo going from 16 to 5 megapixels. Then we got the self timer here, once again the shot taking modes, touch, v sign, smile, capture, and this little dial here that will allow you to take a sports shot or a night shot an HDR shot or a panorama shot. There's a slight lag when switching from one of them to the other. And that's pretty much every mode you can use with the camera on this device. And I'm talking here about the regular camera, the back camera. But of course, you can also switch to the front one since it's a high-end 8 megapixel shooter as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the video area, but before that, in case you were wondering what's the deal with the sports option, well, if you're using sports, you can take 99 pictures in 21 seconds. So if you're doing a fast motion shot, that's good for you. Okay, I've selected video now, and these are the options. We got geotagging, anti-shaking, microphone, video quality, 720p, uh, 1080p available, scene modes, that are only auto or night, time duration, white balance and exposure. So quite a few options in the video area. I was expecting more of them, frankly speaking, after seeing so many of them in the picture taking department. Okay, and now this one is the regular camera app. We also got one called Chancam, but before we get to that, let me actually take a picture of this castle. And let's analyze it here. So here we go, we got a good level of detail, you can actually zoom in a lot, 16 megapixel shot, pretty good illumination, good brightness, and now I promised to get to the charm cam. So this is the standard camera app, and this is the charm cam available here. Uh, this one is focused more on selfies and options like face beauty for example, so if we switch to the front camera, you can see me, the reviewer, and you can create a more beautiful shot. If you go up to level 12, you'll increase the size of the eyes, you'll make the face thinner, and you'll make the wrinkles go away. So 12 levels of beauty, that's face beauty, and then we got makeup, you can take a picture of the face, and then you can add some makeup, that will be very funny to do. Here we go, select the face, you can add lipstick, blush, and anything else you can imagine. Okay, so let's get rid of those compromising shots and let's switch to the back camera this time. There are also features for the back camera as well. So they include best face, the name speaks for itself. You take a series of shots and you choose the best face from them. Then we got eraser. Imagine that you're taking pictures of uh, some people, a dog passes nearby and then you can erase him and his movement. Then we got the live filters. Those include Lomo, Lomo Yellow, Negative, Emboss, Vignetting, Lomo Neutral, and Grayscale, plus the famous Sepia. And then we got something called uh, Stamps. This one allows you to apply a variety of features above the pictures. You can put a hat on some people, a wig, or various other stickers. This one is probably the most interesting mode from the Charm Cam application. It's called PPT. PowerPoint, it focuses on PowerPoints, whiteboards or books. Imagine you're in a presentation, you're sitting at the wrong angle and you want to turn the page that's like this into a page that's like this facing you. Take a picture from the side and the image gets converted frontally so you can see what's on the page. Very nice, very useful. Then we got tracks that will trace uh, a moving objects uh, trajectory, so to say. So all of these features are fun, they're funky. They allow you to play with selfies, they allow you to take PowerPoint shots, so I would say 
The Cham Cam app is pretty useful. By the way, another mention here, I forgot to mention something. The regular camera app will let you zoom up to six times. So six times zoom, not bad at all. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's more than a Galaxy S5 if you want a comparison. Now I'm going to go to the gallery and check out the album of pictures I've taken using this handset. First of all, I have to say that the daylight shots are very good. Got these pictures here. I've taken mostly daylight shots. They're very bright. They have good quality. The HDR is also very good. So this is a regular picture, no HDR, picture with HDR, the exact same statue. And by the way, when you're taking an HDR picture, uh, you'll see that the device takes both a regular picture and the one with the HDR, so you can actually tell the difference. So yet again, the pictures I've taken during daylight, some more samples. The colors are vivid, but there's no oversaturation here. The level of detail is excellent and the pictures are very crisp. Every little detail is highlighted by this camera. I was very impressed by it. I wasn't expecting that good of a quality. This is a picture taken with zoom. You cannot usually see this logo up the top. So yet again, very impressive. We also have some excellent macro shots here. This one is probably the best. Excellent crispness. So very impressive. Uh, the indoor shots are not that good. We have a few of them here. So this is what I try to do, take some indoor shots, they're a bit blurry, but when you try to zoom in, you'll see that the details are all there, so if you ignore the blurriness, you'll see that the level of detail is quite impressive. Uh, also at night, it's not very impressive again, it was about uh, 11 p.m., trying to take pictures of some train tracks, and it seems to have problem with intense light sources. This is also an indoor picture with a flash, this one is handled better. Okay, and uh, we have good panoramas. Let's actually try to find them. Lots of pictures of monuments and such. You'll find the full gallery in the text review, obviously. Searching for that panorama that I ran into earlier. Okay, so this is it. Pretty impressive panorama, as I said. For me, this device is ready to take on the likes of the Galaxy S5, and I'm not exaggerating, and the HTC One M8, at least as far as the daytime shots are concerned. We got good level of detail, even decent low light shots. The night shots are pretty poor, and now let's check out some of the videos. So I'm going to start with this one. I have to say from the start, the videos are crisp and clear. We got good colors, good white balance. The stabilization is not that good and focus can be lost sometimes. Also when you try to zoom in you will rapidly lose detail. The main camera uses BSI technology and I've done some research. The sensor of the camera could theoretically film in 4K but on this device it can't or maybe with an update it will. Who knows. Another video sample. This one here. Very good colors, very good details yet again. And by the way, the front camera is also very good. It's an 8 megapixel shooter. It should be the best selfie camera on the market right now, and I'm not exaggerated. You can also film in full HD, takes crisp pics, it has autofocus. And uh, one of the best selfie cameras was the one on the HTC One M8. Well, this one beats it, so that's pretty good. Um, plus, it has those extra features that you saw earlier from the Charm Cam, so it totally beats the 5 megapixel camera of the HTC One M8. The conclusion regarding the camera is that it takes excellent daylight shots, and the filming is what I would call good, but not fantastic. The low light quality is poor, and uh, the night quality is a bit disappointment. However, we also have a very good front camera, so gathering all the optic capability of the device, 
We're dealing with one of the best cameras I've tested so far and the daylight shots were a bit of a surprise. I was not expecting such quality that will make me compare it to there and compare it with the Galaxy S5. You also have some nifty photo editing options. You select edit and then we got the usual filters black and white, bleach, instant, latte, blue, lito, x process or none then a bunch of frames that we can apply the usual straight and crop, rotate or mirror, exposure we can also apply some options like auto color, vignette, contrast, shadows, vibrance, sharpness, curves, hue, saturation so a lot of features to play with in the pictures there is also the concept of a smart gallery that you can see right here, the pictures are organized in albums you can also see them uh, by people, it's scanning people faces and also by story, it can organize them by date and by the place you've taken them in order to group them better ok, in other news, we also have details about the performance of the device so we started playing uh, some games on it and after 15 minutes of playing Riptide GP2, we achieved the temperature of 41.8 degrees Celsius, which means that the Allview X1 Extreme suffers from overheating. So that's bad news if you're a gamer and you don't want your device to get very hot. Now we move further to the benchmarks. I decided to compare the Allview X1 Extreme with the LG G2 and the Galaxy Note 3 since they share the same CPU and this one has 3 gigs of RAM just like the Galaxy Note 3 so it seems fair to compare it to that one. In Quadrant we score a pretty modest uh, 20k points, actually 2543. We beat the LG G2 by 3000 points, we got beaten by the Note 3 by 500 points, I would say it's okay. In Antutu a pretty good score, 34,269, we beat the LG G2 by about 1000 points, got beaten by the Note 3 by about 800 points. Next up, Nanomark 2, 61.4 frames per second, we beat both the LG G2 and the Note 3 by a few frames, then we got Velamo with a big score, 2637, but this one was beaten by the LG G2 with 2930 and by the Note 3 with 2884. Next up, 3D Mark. I storm unlimited 17,000 points, 125. We beat the LG G2 by 2,000 points. Got beaten by the Note 3 with an enormous score of 19k points. Also did a speed test. Well, here we achieved 14 mega per second in download, 22 in upload. We got beaten by the iPhone 5s, for example, that scores uh, 13 mega per second in download and 18 mega per second in upload, if I'm not mistaken. Then comes Geekbench. Well, in Geekbench 3, we managed to score 885 points in the single core test, getting beaten by the iPhone 5S with almost double the score, and we scored 2381 in the multi core test. This is also an area where the iPhone 5S beat us, but only by about 200 points. Finally, browser test, browser mark 2.0, not a very good score. Uh, 2,397 points, yet again beaten by the Galaxy Note 3 by about 700 points and beaten by the iPhone 5s by 1,200 points. Sun Spider, decent score but not a champion, 601 points, the lower the better and the iPhone 5s beats us yet again with 473 points. So overall I would say that the performance of this device is pretty decent, it could have been better considering we have a big screen big CPU and a lot of RAM, but I guess it will have to do. Okay, so I'm entering the web browser right now and I'm going to access tabletnews.com that will load decently, not very fast, but decently, reasonably fast. The scrolling speed is nice, the screen is crisp enough to read the news without having to zoom in, especially in landscape. This is it, you can easily read the news like this. Obviously, pinch to zoom also works. Check out our Galaxy S5 review. Pretty big one. Almost one hour of video reviewing. Okay, back to this device. We also have a comfy keyboard here. This is it. On such a big screen, a 5.5 vincher, it's inevitable to have a comfy keyboard. Next up, we go to the call area. And here I have to say that we have HD voice available and a triple microphone with noise cancelling. So the sound is crisp and clear. No objection here. And now we move to the OS. Let's check out the operating system. It is Android 4.2.2, which feels old right now, considering even KitKat is prepared to get a replacement. 
It's a bit customized by the company AllView with a bunch of themes, wallpapers and effects. Now let's check out the widgets. The widgets are also customized, well, about 30% of them are. I have to say that the interfaces that AllView likes to implement on its devices are either too playful or they feel antique. Let me give you an example of a theme. Too childish. Let's change it again. You can also tweak the effects. This one uh, feels a bit better, but it's a bit sci-fi and it doesn't clearly explain what you can do here. For example, this one is supposed to be the call. What area of this icon represents a call? I cannot figure out. So, as I said, the themes are either too naive, too imaginative or too childish. And now let's check out the notification area after getting rid of this theme and moving on to a more normal one. Okay, back to the basic. So we got the notification area here and the settings area here with a bunch of shortcuts. The usual ones for silent, vibrate, outdoor, Wi-Fi, data connection, Bluetooth, GPS, auto rotate, guest mode that you'll see a bit later. And now on to the settings. Okay, the common settings include connectivity, display system updates and screen lock. In the display area you will see a feature called open eyes. What this one does is uh, pretty much like the one implemented on the Galaxy S4. It tells you if you're looking at the device or not, keeps the screen on if you're watching it, keeps the screen off if you're not watching it, it detects that you're looking away. As you can see it's running but cannot see my face. And the face is sad when it doesn't detect mine. It's using the front camera to scan and the face was detected. So that's the idea, keeps the screen on when your face is detected. Um, let's see what else we have here. The LCD effect. I said before that the screen seems a bit oversaturated. Well, you can tweak it here to standard, bright colored or gentleness in order to get a different experience, different colors, different saturations. And then comes an interesting option. It is NFC. So NFC comes with a feature called NFC Mark. If you touch it with certain equipment, you can exchange contact, picture, music, with video, web page or files. And if you activate it, you'll be able to interact with some tags like these ones. Those are bundled with the device actually and each one of them can be stuck, can be glued to your car dashboard, to your nightstand, to your workplace. So for example, if I touch the phone on this one, it should be able to detect my mode of use. So this is the home mode. So a home mode has the ability to, for example, uh, turn on the Wi-Fi after you've been on the road. This one is the work mode. And this one is a new tag. It's an empty tag that you'll have to associate. For example, we got a drive tag that keeps the Wi-Fi on, GPS on, Bluetooth on, ring mode. And you can sync a new tag for that. Now I have a drive tag. I can create a new one and uh, name my setup, deactivate or activate the Wi-Fi, the GPS, Bluetooth, guest mode, quick power saving and all that. So each one of these tags can be associated to home, work, drive, sleep or another one. That's what the NFC is used for on this device. It just synchronized my work tag. Okay, so we're done with the NFC. I guess I'm going to deactivate it right now. Going back to the settings. Moving too fast for the phone. Okay, back to the settings, here we find something interesting, it's called a suspend button. You can move this button around, it locks the screen up, it gives you some options, it gets you back to the home screen, it's basically a little tool toolbox that you can move around and get rid of if you're annoyed by it. Okay, deactivating it. In the security area, you'll have something called the guest mode. Well, this one will hide the call logs, messages, albums and notes, desktop ID will be forgiven forbidden if the guest mode is on. So if someone else touches your phone, activate the guest mode and your special content, pictures and all that will be hidden. Uh, aside from the guest mode here, let's see what else. Back to the settings. And we got some LED light option for your notification, low power remind, charging remind or notification remind. And then comes the area with smart gestures. Let's activate them. One of them is Smart Dial. The animation pretty much shows it. You access the contact detail page, put the phone to your ear and it will call that person automatically. Smart Answer. 
you pick up the phone to your face and the call is answered automatically. If you flip the phone doing an alarm, it pauses it. You can also double click to wake or we have quick operating, that's a very cool feature. So I'm activating it right now, that double click to activate. Here it is, that's what it does. And let's see the other one that I called cool. Quick operating, well, you can draw symbols on the screen to trigger certain features. For example, I can draw a C to activate the camera. It takes a while with a bit of lag, but it's a funky little feature that you may enjoy and it may give you quicker access in lag of a camera button. Okay, so we're done with the smart gestures, we're done with the quick operate. If you want to do multitasking, obviously you keep the home button pressed, you swipe around to close the apps. And that's pretty much it. Now, an area I like to call and others, when you're in the lock screen, you can swipe to the right and you will trigger some special features like the camera, the audio recording, the torch, which is basically your uh, source of light, and something called fake call. I find it to be very cute. You activate fake call and in a few seconds you receive a fake call to get rid of the pesky people that annoy you. You're in a bar, you met someone you don't want to see, you pretend you're getting a call from work and this is what fake call does. You can actually answer it or reject it and if you answer it you'll hear a voice saying that you have to send him those files. Which one is the speaker? Anyway, you got the idea. I have to send some imaginary files to get rid of uh, friends. Um, let's also check out some settings that I forgot. I'm talking about accessibility settings. Here in this area, you can activate glove input. So if it's cold outside and you're wearing gloves, you can actually input on the screen with no problem. And now we're in that area of the review where we check out all the pre-installed apps on this device. So we're starting with the usual contacts, messaging, file explorer, play store, calendar, charm cam that you already saw, phone accelerate. And this one will clean the processes and the cache, optimize the boot. You can actually shake it to accelerate the phone. I just released 300 megabytes of space. We got power management, system update, and then we got a feature called color. Color allows you to customize the wallpaper, theme, or effects of the interface. Okay, so other pre-installed apps include weather. That looks pretty decent. Here it is. You can get your localization like this. You can also see the weather for the following days. Takes a while to locate you, but as I said, the app's interface is pretty decent some settings here weather animation preview sunny day cloudy day moderate rain so it looks pretty nice haven't seen this one before other options available here include team these are the teams available on this device as i said they're pretty ugly i don't quite fancy them we also have an, a notes app once again nothing fancy you write a note you attach a picture a place or maybe a location or an audio note. You move further to an app manager that allows you to uninstall apps, move apps, change app permissions or change default app settings. Then we got something called Traffic Assistant. It's a bit like uh, DataSense from Windows phones. It allows you to restrict the traffic you're making on your mobile data and check out your traffic rank during each day of use. Then we got Bitdefender Mobile Security with a malware scanner, privacy advisor, web security and anti-theft features. Next up, FM Radio, Torch, Google Maps. That looks and moves pretty well. After all, we're on a device with 3 gigs of RAM and a powerful Snapdragon 800 processor. Okay, we're done with that. And Maps, as I said, we got a compass. Always useful when you're lost in the wild. The calibration seems to be okay. A calculator, office suite for reproductivity needs. For example, you can view a document like this. Let's see what else. Sound recorder, self-care, voice search, and finally, an app called Sigic. Well, Sigic is a navigation app, and it requires me to enable the GPS, which I did. 
So CGIC has a partnership with the folks of uh, AllView, they're including this app on their devices. It allows me to navigate by downloading a bunch of maps, also have settings like routes, you can load routes, delete routes, you have a CGIC store, you can download more maps. We got traffic information, premium speed cameras, heads up displays, celebrity voices, family GPS tracker, an SOS feature. My community, some settings that include route planning, regional, battery management, information bar, sidebar, and this is how you look up an address. You can drive to or walk there, you can show on the map, check out points of interest nearby, zoom in, change the view of the map in 3D or 2D, and this is a pretty responsive navigation app, so I'm pretty happy with it, it has points of interest, 3D, and it's pretty, pretty fast. Okay, now the conclusions, we're done with the AllView Exxon Extreme, aka the Johnny eLife E7, if you know the Chinese version, the pros and cons are as follows. We got a very good camera, a shockingly good camera when it comes to daylight shots, we also have um, pretty good video capture available on this device. We have good audio thanks to these speakers and thanks to the fantastic earbuds. The screen is what I would call pretty good, not excellent but pretty good. And other good things about here, about this device here, uh, the camera features, there's a lot of them as you saw earlier. Especially in the charm cam application you can have fun with selfies, we can take pictures of powerpoints, so a lot of modes for the camera. We have powerful hardware inside, powerful processor, 3 gigs of RAM, so that's also good. In the audio technology side, we got DTS sound and Yamaha sound, so we're covered with technologies when it comes to the audio. And extras like the CIGIC application, the gesture control, the double tapping, the NFC tags, all of that, all those extras are welcome at, are in the pro section. Now in the cons section, we got poor low light camera. We got um, a battery that I expected more from, so maybe more than 8 hours from it would have been nice. We got a glossy and slippery case in the cons. We got what I would call an ugly user interface. Especially if you mess around with the teams, you'll see that none of them uh, makes you fancy it. We don't have KitKat available, which is a bit of a problem. The device tends to overheat a bit. And um, uh, I must mention that this device does not have LTE. At the beginning of the review I said it has LTE, then I looked it up, it does not have LTE. So yet another minus point. And all the grades. For the design, I'm going to give the AllView Exxon Extreme an 8.7 out of 10. For the hardware, a solid 9.5 out of 10. Solid camera, solid CPU, solid RAM, lots of storage, decent battery. And for the OS and UI, an 8.5 out of 10. The final grade is 8.9 out of 10. And considering that fantastic series of daylight shots, I will add an extra 0.2. So from 8.9 out of 10, it reaches 9.1 out of 10. Some people will prefer buying a Samsung or HTC, a cheaper one, simply for the brand. And they will miss out on this handset. That's not very expensive, but about $620. As I said, very good camera, very good hardware, so why not go ahead and buy it. All VX1 Extreme, Johnny Elife 7 This is tabletnews.com and this has been the review of this 5.5 inch tablet. Bye bye.